right, 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 right. I feel like we're really like up and in each other. How are you guys doing? My name is Avimbala Craig. Hey, stop. Hi guys, what's up? Let's go straight into it. Hi guys, my name is Abimbala Craig. I am a YouTuber in Lagos, Nigeria. I create content, sometimes films, sometimes series, sometimes just sweet stubs. Please, if this is your first time, welcome to my new subbies. I'm so grateful. Thank you guys. Please make sure you smash the like button. Please share. Please subscribe. All right, let's go straight into our song. <laughs> Abimbola pepe rimpe, pepe rimpe. Hey, sugar, 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 sugar. All oh, my sweeties, sweeties. You guys are my sweeties. Hi, guys. What's up? Welcome back. So, today I'm going to try and make this video really short. However, it might not be because, as you know me, you know what's up. So, let's get into it. Today I am going to be talking about. Things I wish I knew about dating in my 20s. Yes, you guys, you heard me. My book is here. I wrote down the gospel. Yeah, so let's get into the video. First things first, and first thing I, I wish I knew. It's just very simple, to be honest with you. I just wish I knew that dating was exactly that, dating. I think I necessarily didn't understand or define what dating was for myself until I was in my 30s. And what it is now to me is this. Dating is pretty much just getting to know someone. It's nothing physical. It's, not, it's just literally getting to know for me. That's what dating is. It's getting to know someone. Spending time getting to know someone. Or people. I can date multiple people. Simply because for me, it's just getting to know. There's nothing physical going on. We're just chilling going out, eating, drinking, laughing, getting to know each other better. I wish I knew that was what dating was in my 20s. For me, in my 20s, I was, I just, I thought it was something way more serious, but we'll get into it. Number two, I wish I knew that dating could be fun while still being intentional. Um, it's very important that and I guess maybe I should jump into number three quickly so that it can tie into number two. Um, we're all very different and it's important that you know who you are at the core of it all before you decide to date at whatever age that is. And one thing that I know about me is I don't half-ass things. I don't do things by mistake. I'm a very intentional person. And based off of that, I took dating to be so serious. And if you didn't give me the same serious energy... I just wasn't interested because I'm like, oh, I'm here for serious intentions. You are here to just be laughing and be joking. What's that? No, no, no. Dating is serious. But in my 30s, I realized that dating can be intentional but can still be fun. It's not that deep. Don't tie the wall to your chest. You know what I mean? I wish I knew that in my 20s. I think things would have been... I wish I knew that in my 20s. I genuinely think things would have been very different. But anyways, we move on. Um, another thing I wish I knew in my 20s <laughs> was that not every dating relationship would lead or should lead to marriage. I can date with intention, but still not the intention to marry you. Literally just the intention to date you. I think growing up, and I don't know about you, I can only speak for myself. Um, being Christian, growing up in the church, hearing certain things about dating and stuff like that. Um... In my 20s, if I was dating you, we were meant to marry. I'm talking about, let me give you guys a joke, but it's serious. I remember when I was in primary school and, you know how they used to tell you that if your boy should touch you, um, you get pregnant. Uh -huh. I was one of those people that I took it literal, like in my head, the day day. If you touch me, you marry me. Shout out to Leko Ngunde because he suffered. He touched me when I was in primary school and for that whole day, I held his shirt like this because he was my sitting partner. I said, you have touched me. You must marry me, oh, you must marry me. It's the same thing, right? I just always assumed that if you dated someone, it had to lead to marriage. Why am I wasting my time? Or why did I assume it was wasting time? 
Why couldn't I just enjoy the fact that I was getting to know someone? And if it led into a committed, exclusive relationship, then it did. And if after that it led into marriage, then it did. If after the exclusive relationship we realized we didn't want to be together, that's fine. Life moves on. You move on to the next. I wish I knew that in my 20s, guys. Deep it. I also wish I knew that part of dating was putting yourself out there. And I think a lot of young ladies, we don't know this. Um, and I guess I blame society. I just, I blame a lot of people by myself because I didn't know. And I guess to be fair, they also did not know. Um, we're raised, and I say we in terms of Nigerians, especially girls, we were raised to believe that the man had to approach you. And um, if he didn't approach you, then it wasn't going to happen. And so based off of that, a lot of girls grow up with insecurities because no man is approaching them. They are thinking that they're an issue. They are the issue. There's something wrong with them. But I wish I knew in my 20s that I could put myself out there. I used to say a dude that I liked or I fancied or I found attractive. And I could just say hi and smile and be flirtatious. And it could either lead to something or it could not. As opposed to always waiting for someone to just approach me. As opposed to always not just... Using my initiative. You know what I mean? I wish I knew. So if you're in your 20s, or whatever age it is, I think it's important that you try to put yourself out there a bit. You know what I mean? Let people know that you're single. Let people know that you're open to dating. Speak about it. If you see something that you like, go for it. I mean, what's the worst that can happen? Really and truly. I also wish that I was open to finding love in different places in my 20s when it came to dating. Um... I don't know why, but I just always assumed that it was either going to be somebody that I went to school with, and if I didn't know you, then I wasn't interested. I always assumed, I didn't know who because I didn't find anybody in my circle of family, friends growing up attractive, to be honest with you. But I just always assumed that I was going to marry or date somebody that was within my circle. And I think if I was more open-minded to dating somebody outside of my circle, I probably might have dated a bit more. And when I mean outside of my circle, I'm talking about in all ramifications, right? In terms of class, in terms of, you get what I'm trying to say without me saying it. I wish I was just a bit more open-minded to the fact that, you know, anything was possible. I also wish in my 20s, I asked people to set me up. Um, I don't know why, but it still goes back and it kind of ties into the whole, you know, um, women not being open to pushing ourselves up. Stepping up to the guy first, it's the same thing. Um, it's like as if if you tell people that, ah, I'm single or introduce me to someone who you're desperate. I wish I had taken advantage to have met different people when people tried to set me up. For the longest of time, anytime anybody did in my 20s, I'm like, no, I'm not interested. Hello, please. I'm not that desperate. Hello, please. Do I look desperate to you? And I'm thinking to myself now in my 30s, wow, Bimbo, what was really up your ass? Because, girl... It's just an introduction, you understand me? If it leads anywhere, it leads anywhere. If it doesn't, it is what it is. And I don't know why I was so uptight about it. So I would say if you are dating right now and you're in your 20s, definitely be open to people hooking you up. Let people know. Nobody gonna read. They don't, they don't read the sign. They don't let people know. And if people approach you and they tell you they want to, let them. I mean, what's the worst? Again, that could happen. Um, another thing I would tell, <laughs> and I wish I knew then, because, I mean, online dating had started then, was to have tried online dating a bit more in my 20s. Um, I actually didn't, and I never did until I was in my 30s. Um, and it's crazy now because the world is opening and everything is happening, and there's access to everything and everyone literally at the tip of your finger. So I would say that if you're dating or about to start dating and you're in, 20, and, and you're in your 20s, Definitely explore online dating. And when I mean online dating, listen, if someone slides in your DM on Twitter, you're online dating. If someone slides in your DM on Facebook, you're online dating. If someone slides in your DM on uh, Instagram, you're online dating. So please do it. Also, somebody asked me what kind of websites that they can visit for online dating. And I will tell you a few. Sidetrack, we'll come back. Um, Lagos, I know a few. I have only tried two actively. Actually, three. My friend set me up on Tinder years ago, and I was only on it for two weeks. I didn't match with anybody. I just wasn't interested. It just, it didn't feel like my vibe. So I know there's Tinder. I have tried Hinge in Lagos. It's quite limiting, just because a lot of people don't know about it. But it do work. 
Um, and then Bumble, I guess that's the one that everybody uses. And those three are the most popular, aside from the typical Twitter, Instagram, Clubhouse, all that good stuff. Um, those of you in the diaspora, diaspora, there are plenty. If you're in the diaspora, there are plenty. There's Kristen Mingle, there's Hinge, there's Bumble, there's Tinder. There is so many, but there's one I recently heard of that is very exclusive. It's called Raya. R-A-Y-A. Now, when I say exclusive, it's exclusive to a T. You need to be invited by someone who was already verified on the app first. And the verification that they use is from your LinkedIn to your Instagram. They literally check your profile out to be sure you are who you say you are. Simply because the crop of people, the caliber of men and women on that platform is exquisite. I'm talking about from Nollywood. Um, screw, screw. I'm joking, but what I was about to say or was meant to say before I got to Nollywood was I'm talking about Hollywood um, film makers, actors, NFL players, sport players, movie directors. It's it's a it's a listen. The ocean is oh, it's plenty in there, and so yeah, if you are, it's also not free. The all the other ones I called, they're free. Raya, she not free. You finna pay for it. It's like twenty bucks a month. So if you're going on that kind of app and spending that kind of money, you got to be intentional. But those are a few um, dating sites that I know of that are active. I also tell people never underestimate Facebook. I don't do it. I don't use it as often, but that's just because it's just me. But I know a lot of people in this 2022 and previous years that have literally found soulmates, dated people from Facebook. Facebook is still undefeated for a lot of things. So yeah, let's go back. Another thing I wish I knew and I understood better in my 20s about dating was never to get upset when I wasn't texted back. You guys heard me. You guys heard me. Now in my 30s, listen, except for exclusive, exclusive, meaning that you're my boyfriend and I'm your girlfriend. If we're getting to know each other and I text you and you don't text me back or it takes hours or it takes days, I don't sweat it anymore. And I wish I knew then, because the amount of people that I canceled for not replying me, shoot, <laughs> it choke. I used to cancel people left, right, and center. I'm like, oh, excuse me, what? You didn't reply me back, and I'm not interested. That's it. But now I take a chill pill. So if you don't get texted back as often as you would like, relax a bit. If it feels like the person has ghosted you and you know you don't know what's going on move on. However, if you felt like you and this person did have a connection and it does feel a bit off that this person hasn't responded back to your text or just generally hasn't even texted you back to check up on you, I would say give it a week, do a follow-up. If you don't get a response, then move on. But don't be too scared to just text to just see what's up. You know what I mean? Especially when there was, a, especially when there was already an open line of communication. Don't. And while we're talking about this, I always knew, but I'm saying for those of you that don't know, it's important that when you're dating, you communicate. A lot of people when dating, do a lot of talking to the people that they're dating. They don't do a lot of listening and communication is both ways. You are talking, you are listening, you are taking in, you're taking back, you're giving feedback, you're letting people know what it is that you want and what you need. And that leads me to the next thing that I wish I knew when I was dating in my 20s. I wish to be very honest with you, that I communicated my needs very upfront. Um, I'm the kind of person where I'm a very, and I guess this, these are two things intertwined together, um, which always boils down to before you go into dating, always know yourself at the core of it all. I'm a very assertive person. However, I'm not aggressive. Neither am I passive, right? But because I know I'm very assertive, and I know that in Nigeria, and just even generally in the world, when you're a black woman, and I'm not trying to play the race card, so calm down, I'm going somewhere. And if you get it, you get it. If you're a black woman and you're very assertive, um, the world will try to make you come off as angry or aggressive. And it's not the same thing. I just know what I want. And I thankfully, I know how to communicate it. However, I was always very shy to do that in my 20s because I felt like if I did, I didn't want to scare any guy off with my supposed strong personality because that's what it was always labeled at, as. And now I know better. Now I know that if a man is grown enough and he's mature enough and he has emotional intelligence enough to want to go on dates with me, then he should be open to me being able to say, this is what I need. Always, leading to the next thing, always be very upfront from the jump. 
I'm not telling you to tell this man or tell this lady that you want to get married to her the first date or the second date. You decide. Emotional intelligence is very needed when dating, first of all. But you decide when. But for this point, it's important that you're upfront at the beginning. Listen, right now, all I want to do is hook up. I'm not ready to talk serious. I'm not ready to be in serious. I'm not ready to be committed. This is what I want. Period. So that the person that you're about to get into this thing with is aware. There's no stories that touch. There's no hearts crying. There's nobody weeping. Everybody's on the same even playing field. If I'm interested, then we move ahead. If I'm not, then we move along. If what you want to do is date, say you are dating. If you want to do is date totally to marriage, say it up front. If the guy is interested or the lady is interested, I don't know why people are never up front. A lot of people just always rig my role and just be doing like this, doing like that, doing like... Mm -mm -mm. If anybody cannot take you being upfront with your needs, cannot take you being assertive about what you want, from the minute they start to date you, then they're not for you. However, always remember that while you're communicating all of this, the how and the mood and the timing is always very important. Again, goes back to emotional intelligence. If you have none, you have no business dating. Okay, cool. Don't go on dates with people you're not attracted to. Don't do it. And attraction doesn't necessarily always have to be that he's a fine guy or that she's a fine babe. It can be that you like the way he speaks. You like her nails. You think she has a good sense of humor. There needs to be something that makes you say, you know what, yeah, let me try and get to know. If it's just for the food, sis, bro, sit your ass at home and eat indomie. Don't be, don't be out here wasting people's time. Don't do it because... You're wasting your time too. You, you get like, don't do it. Just, just don't do it. Period. Next thing I would say is when you're dating, there's a certain topic of conversation that should come up. Now I'm not talking about just first dates. So please, for those of you that want to write it, it's not what you say on the first date. Dating. You are dating. Many previous dates, more than one date, three dates, four dates, multiple people just have these conversations. It's important. I wish in my twenties that I was very open to talk about sex. I wasn't. I was not at all. I wasn't. Now, I had to unlearn a lot of things to get to the point of comfortability where I could talk about sex with a man that wasn't my boyfriend, but I was getting to know without me feeling like he was being insultive, without me feeling like he was being inappropriate, and without me feeling irked by just having the conversation. But don't be scared to talk about the sex. I didn't say to have sex, to have conversations about it. And I'm not telling you on the first date. No, I'm telling you on the second date. My point is when you're dating somebody, I'm, I'm, this is me hoping that it's just one guy but, or one girl or whatever. Um, have conversations about sex. It's important. It's very, very important. Those who know, know. I'm not going to break things down to you. Use your, use your color. You're not, use your senses. Make sure you have conversations about sex. Whether you want to have sex, you don't want to have sex. You have sex, you're not, you're into girls, you're into boys. Have sex conversations when dating. It's very important. I said what I said. Also, and I'm about to say this person twofold, and I'm trying to keep to time, but I just, I just got to say it. Worry less about labels. Worry less. I didn't say don't worry. However, worry less about labels. I think it's important that in these times that we're in, we know exactly where we stand with certain people. And I feel like in my 20s, I didn't. Once me and you have talked, maybe once or twice. And then, remember I say we are, you know, things are not the way things are now. <laughs> you understand me? So it wasn't like we were always physically out and about, right? It was always texting. It was always calling. And after you've spoken to someone, maybe one week, even if it's reached into a month, right? Immediately, you feel like you want to know what exactly is going on. However, I think knowing what is going on and asking if we're in a relationship are two different things. And so that's why I say worry less. Now, if you're the kind of person that you've been with this person and you guys have been dating and you've decided that, you know what, you've narrowed out everybody else you're dating and this is the one person you want to bullseye focus on, this is where your attention is, I think you can now start having a conversation as to what exactly is it that we're doing. But if it's only been a few weeks and... Based on how often or lack there of you guys hang out, talk, text, all of that, I think if you start to get really trippy about 
him acting or she seeing somebody else, I think you are moving a bit to, you know, like worry less about the labels. Focus more on getting to know each other, getting to spend time, being intentional about what you want, being on the same page. And I guess eventually all those things will fall into place. However, do not forget to focus on the red flags. Don't do it. I, I, I was focused on the red flags in my 20s. So I wasn't confused. However, I've noticed that a lot of guys and a lot of girls make excuses for things that they know at the back of their head is itching them and scratching them that they shouldn't be. Never, ever, ever, when dating, ignore the red flags because that's your opportunity to either set it right or to let it go. When dating, talk about the past but focus more on the present. Um... I think it's important that you talk about the past just so that you just know where the person's headspace was, you know, before meeting you and where he intends to go in the future in terms of whatever this is. However, don't dwell too much on the past. I feel like a lot of people forget that people change. And based off of that, you can't judge a man or a woman on their past experiences because sometimes it really shapes them into the better versions of themselves. And so because of whatever has happened or what you've heard of the person's past, sometimes you don't realize those preconceived perceptions can really mess with you. And then you are just jaded and you just don't even give it a try. And all you know, or to the best of your understanding, you are letting go of something that could have been great. So like I said, talk about the past just so you know how to navigate the present and hopefully the future, but don't dwell on it. And last but not the least, guys, practice. Practice, practice, practice. I did not date enough in my 20s. And that's why I'm telling you lots this. Like I said, I've explained to you lots what dating is to me. And it's still the same thing till now. And so date people. Practice dating. Enjoy dating. Don't, don't tie the wall to your chest. You can only get better if you keep doing it consistently. Practice dating. You know what I mean? Go on dates with people. Go on dates with yourself. Love yourself, communicate with yourself, be good to yourself, and then you know it would it would it would come out. But yeah, practice, guys, practice, practice, practice. So that's the end of this video. There's so many things I wrote down, but I'm trying to make it short and sweet because I don't want to be blabbing. So you guys, let me know the things that you've learned in your twenties, the things that you're currently learning in your whatever ages it is that you're in she'll get but yeah these are the things that i learned now i wish i knew my 20s and just a few extra tips about dating all right i'm gonna see you guys on the next one um so yeah um let me know what you guys thought about this video in the comment section if you enjoyed it if you want to see more of it what am i saying gosh all right guys so these are just a few things i wanted to share with you lots um obviously the comment is open so please spam it let me know what you learned while you were dating in your 20s, what you're learning right now while you're currently dating. And please don't forget to subscribe until the next one. It is your girl, Abimbala, what? Baby. Hey, Rimpy. See you guys later. Bye.